community. My name is Martin Morandel, and it's a very special honor for me to chair this session of the Zero Project community on innovative assistive technology for ICT access. It's a big pleasure to share this session together with my mentor, friend, and professor, Klaus Miesenberger from the University of Linz. I'm running the company Smart in Life, and with Smart in Life, we aim to improve the quality of life of people with disabilities by applying smart and assistive technology. We do this in the form of consulting, training, teaching, and research in those domains. But coming back to our community, what is our community about? The Zero Project community is about assistive technology, and assistive technology is really key for ICT access. The needs of people with disabilities are very, very diverse. Good ideas are not enough to, to really follow those needs. The path from a simple idea, very often among a student's project, etc., is really, really long and difficult to really drive impact, long-lasting impact and sustainable impact out there. So we aim to bring those cool innovations together to learn from each other, to learn with each other, to collaborate which is, uh, which, with each other, and also to network with each other. We try to bring in experts in this domain to really help them, to give them advice, and uh, uh, to push their ideas further to reach a bigger market out there. So who is this community built of? We are very happy to have on board Michael Tremel from Tetragon in Austria, Johannes Strefka Betz from Oscar in Austria, Fia Dashma from Sono Kids Australia, Peter Heumara from the project Easy Reading, Georg Chare from the company Sign Time. And those members are led by the, com uh, by the experts Klaus Miesenberger from the University uh, of Linz, David Baines, David Baines Access and Inclusion, and Alvin Tan from, five, uh, from, from SG Enable in Singapore. So I would say let's give the floor to our innovators and let's start with David Baines, who is not only the expert, but he's also really driving innovation and therefore has a very good approach how to use global symbol sets worldwide. Global symbols, because communication matters everywhere. Global symbols are established to meet the need for graphic symbols for people with little or no speech or communication, regardless of location or geography. We want to create symbols that are familiar to users that reflect their language and culture and which are available freely and openly and can be used by developers and vendors to create new products for people in new and emerging markets. Global Symbols has got a number of key features. I'm going to take you briefly through each, but they are fundamentally a symbol repository, a way of creating communication boards, a way of editing symbols and support for training. The symbols are available at globalsymbols.com. There's a number of different symbol sets developed by different organizations. Those symbols are in different languages and reflect the culture within which they've been developed. We have tools and support to help people vote and determine and choose which symbols are right for them within their setting. Our board builder is a free online service where you can create simple communication boards by which people can communicate using the symbols that have been set for their community. They can also be very specific. 
So for instance, there were a range of symbols that relate to the pandemic, so that people in care homes and healthcare settings can create usable boards for when people can't communicate using speech as a result of infection. We offer a way in which symbols can be edited and created. We recognize that sometimes you need to develop a symbol that is slightly different to those available from other people. So in this case, we've combined the symbols for cat and bad to create the symbol for bad cat. And we understand fully and have worked closely with UNICEF to develop training materials that are openly licensed, that can be translated and localized for communities to build capacity in AAC and communication. Moving forward, what we're looking for are partners who would like to work with us in designing symbols for their community, who would like to disseminate tools and training, who are interested in adding symbols to existing projects. And to do this, we're looking for support with project funding, for capacity building for communities, and creating symbols, boards, training, and support. Thank you, David. I think that is a really good approach and it really is asking for global co uh, collaboration. So I'm sure if, if you are working in Maine, you should reach out to David. But who else could use such global systems? What about integrating in into new technology? Therefore, we have another project in that domain. Uh, this project is called Easy Reading and it's presented by our colleague from the University of Linz, Peter Heumada. Hello everybody, my name is Peter Heumada. I work at the Johannes Kepler University in Linz, Austria. And in this small presentation, I give an overview on Easy Reading, which is a software for people with cognitive disabilities. Easy Reading was an EU funded project and it's a software framework that tries to improve the cognitive accessibility of web pages. It is implemented as a cloud solution and any user is able to connect to the cloud with the clients. Clients come in form of browser extensions which are available for Chrome and Firefox. Uh, we are currently working on an app for easy reading and latest we managed to also embed easy reading directly in a web page without the need of a browse extension or an app. Once easy reading is installed, users are able to get help for any web content in real time. The help is rendered directly within the page. When easy reading is installed and the user is logged in, the easy reading user interface is injected in every web page. Users are able to get help here for any content that is difficult to understand. For example, they could use the text to speech function, which reads out the text aloud. Zebras are African equines with black and white striped coats and share the genus Equus with horses and asses. Zebras inhabit eastern and southern Africa and by this, people with cognitive disabilities are able to focus more on the content of the page, which makes the web page as a whole easier to comprehend. Another function of the system is the colorize function. This function allows users to set font color and background color to a user-defined value. Here we selected black and white to increase contrast and therefore to increase the readability of text. Users are always able to switch back to the original color set. A final example for a function of the system would be the symbol annotation function. This function analyzes text and tries to identify keywords that are important for understanding the text. In the next step, symbols representing these keywords are fetched out of the database and finally, they are rendered within the browser. Users are always able to switch back to see the original content. 
these were some examples for functions to give an overview how easy reading works on a real web page. Because of the limited time in this presentation, I am not really able to show every function that our system hosts at the moment. Currently, we implemented a solid prototype of the system and we are looking f now forward to get it to the market. However, we are still improving functionality and stability to make it market ready this year. More information about easy reading can be found on the web page or if you have any specific question, feel free to write me an email. We are always looking for corporations, ideas for improved functionality or feedback in general. Thank you for your attention. Thanks Peter for that presentation. So think about how could this approach of having a cognitive screen reader also be used maybe for other target groups. For example, hearing impaired people also have sometimes problems uh, with uh, special phrases, etc. Therefore, we are uh, changing over to our next slide, to our next presentation given by Georg Czare on uh, the company Cymax. Georg, please tell us more about what Cymax is doing. And I'm from the company SignTime, based in Vienna, Austria. I will present you SignX, our sign language avatar system, and look at the sign language tooltip. What are we working on? We translate texts into sign language, and we use a 3D animated avatar system. SignX works semi-automatically. The engine provides a translation proposal for a translator. The human translator finalizes the translation with some corrections. How does it look like in action? For those who understand sign language, what you see in this presentation is German sign language and Austrian sign language. For some use cases with standardized text information, we can translate fully automatically in real time. Like in this project, which we produce for the public transport company in Vienna. As all sentences used in incident messages and other loudspeaker announcements are standardized and always very similar, we can translate them fully automatically. We can change the look of the avatar easily. The movements of the avatar are not stored on the skin of the character, but in the skeleton of the avatar. So we can reuse easily the animations once produced. We provide an, an avatar editor on our website where customer can create their own character. Let me show you. We can change between a male and a female avatar. You can change the hairdress the color of the hair, the clothing, and you can insert your own logo and your background logo so you can customize your avatar for your company. For some special cases, we have an avatar designer who could build special creations of avatars like this a Roman soldier created for a museum of Roman history in Germany. Our vision is to make all text content on the web accessible in sign language. Enabling full accessibility is still complex and expensive. As our translation still requires a lot of manual work, we have developed a new product. With the Synex Look app, we can make large amounts of text more accessible to the deaf. It works as a tooltip where complex terms are explained in sign language. Let me show you. You see a normal website with, in this case, medical information. All terms that are difficult to understand are explained in sign language. 
Very often, the description of a single word or expression in sign language helps a deaf person to understand the whole sentence. Providing this kind of tooltip in sign language makes the service highly scalable at low cost. The expressions and terms once described in sign language can easily be reused not only on a certain website but also on other sites. Let me show you. I click on the button for the look app. Then you see all the expressions for which we provide sign language descriptions and with mouse over you can get the expression very easily in sign language. Of course, this is not a full translation into sign language, but it comes closest to that. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, George, for your presentation on Symex. It's always interesting to see where the Avada technology is going and how this is uh, incorporated into new approaches. Now let's change a little bit the application field and move over to the question, how can kids with disability learn all those technology, especially for example, how could blind kids learn how to work with the iPhone, the smartphone, etc. Sonar Kids Australia and Fia Damsa and her team, they are developing really cool apps to make blind kids understand and learn by playing how to use screen uh, readers on mobile devices and other tools. Fia. Tell us more. Good morning from Australia. I am Fia Damsma and I am the co-founder and creative director of Sono Kids. Bodyland educational apps, early learning technology supporting children who are blind or visually impaired in developing essential technology skills by Sono Kids. Exactly one year ago, my Sono Kids colleague John Nurgaard and I were in Vienna attending the 2020 Zero Conference as winners of an award for innovative practice. We all know how soon it became necessary for many of us to stay at home, and today you are joining online. Participation, access to education, staying connected with family and friends, work for all of us have become heavily dependent on effective technology skills. These skills are super important for students who are blind or visually impaired as well. To access remote learning for social inclusion and connectivity, and certainly having skills to use computers and mobile devices will also increase their opportunities for future employment. But how do you learn these skills when you are blind and especially when you're young? This is important because learning to access from a young age means that you can have access to learning at school at the same time and on an equal level as your sighted friends. So let me introduce you to Bollyland. Bollyland is a virtual imaginary world full of songs, stories and sounds where the Bollylanders live. These are six characters who are ball shaped, each have a signature sound and a specific way of moving around. The imaginary world of Bollyland forms the backdrop of the Bollyland suite of software and apps that support young students who are blind or visually impaired to develop fundamental digital and technology skills. Children are motivated to learn with Bollyland because they're having fun and feel supported. With Bollyland, they have proven to be able to develop many skills of the expanded core curriculum, apart from learning to use touchscreen technology without sight. The Sona for Kids Bollyland Accessible Gamified e-learning pathway currently includes apps for iOS, for iPads and iPhones, for Android, one for Alexa smart speakers, software for Windows computers, and supporting tactile learning tools. The apps are available in multiple languages, including, after our visit to Austria, a German version of the Bollyland Magic app, the Bollyland Zauber Show. This app enables blind children to learn to use a mobile device by way of finger gestures on the screen and the inbuilt screen reader. 
Polyland is innovative as it provides children who are blind with the opportunity for hands-on independent learning of digital skills from a very young age. It offers gamified learning with the Bollylanders and original songs that are even helping children to learn the correct rhythm for certain touch gestures. And Sonokit has developed Bollyland tactile learning tools with the digital apps through innovative use of 3D printing technology. This is quite unique. So what is our future? We want to further expand and promote Bollyland, but keep our product costs low. They're very cheap, the apps, to reach and educate as many young students as possible, to keep improving educational opportunities and access for young students who are blind or visually impaired, and facilitate these students to become skilled, independent, and valuable contributors to our societies. So support Bollyland. To continue and expand our work on Bollyland and sustain its valuable impact, we need funding. Sonokids invites potential sponsors to contact us. And also, if you are interested in a partnership or can assist us with creating spin-offs like merchandise, toys, books of the popular Bollyland characters, and specifically a Bollyland animated TV series, can you help? <laughs> Please contact Sono Kids for more information. We kindly thank you for your attention. Thank you, Fia, for your presentation. I really like your approach and I tried out the apps on my own. I can only say it's really, really fun and definitely one of the best ways to teach blind and visually impaired kids how to dive into how to have fun with using the phone as all the others by playing. But what's next? What's after you have learned how to have the initial uh, commands, etc.? Maybe you want to start typing, typing a different way. And there, there's also another solution, maybe for afterwards. Johannes Streifiger Betz and Oscar, they have created a very new approach using a mobile uh, braille keyboard for mobile devices. Johannes, let us know more about your approach. Oscar, a mobile braille keyboard for smartphones. My name is Johannes Streckebitz. The slick touchscreens of smartphones offer no tangible orientation for blind and visually impaired people. Accessibility information and communication technology hardware is lacking. We empower ourselves and build our own accessible mobile communication hardware with digital fabrication, open source blueprints and collaborative design. We create open and sustainable access to a connected world. A braille keyboard can be very simple in design. Oscar consists of eight switches and a microcontroller. The data transfer is done via USB cable or Bluetooth. We have two versions of Oscar available. You can put Oscar Concertina with eight physical braille writer keys on the back of the smartphone. Oscar Zitter offers two additional space keys for the thumbs. We solve following problems. Voice control is often not possible when on the move. Braille note takers are expensive and can only be used with a pad. With Oscar, smartphone control is mobile, discreet, fast and accurate. The entry is not sensitive to noise and can be made while standing or walking. Oscar is an open source project. You can download the building instructions. We have made a study at the Technical University Vienna. Blind and visually impaired people type on the smartphone four times slower than sighted people. After five minutes of training, 
blind and visually impaired people are four times faster than touchscreen entry and two times more precise than touchscreen entry. We are Erich Schmidt from the Federal Institute for the Blind in Vienna, me, Johannes Schreckerbetz, and many open source developers on which the project is based. We are currently addressing the following challenges. The solution should be cheap because there is a little pay for blind and visually impaired people. Pre-assembled devices are more expensive than do-it-yourself kits. The building instructions require a soldering iron. Hot soldering iron can cause burn blisters on the fingers, with which no braille dots can be felt. Therefore, we are now developing self-assembling kits for blind and visually impaired people together with the Federal Institute for Education of the Blind in Vienna. This will allow us to become more affordable and make digital production work accessible to more people. We are looking for partnerships for the development of inclusive digital production. We would like to encourage all interested parties to get in contact with us so that we can find solutions with the greatest possible impact. Thank you. Maybe you do not only want to use Braille as input methodology on your mobile device, but maybe also as output methodology. Carrying around a big Braille display maybe is not so handy all the time. Maybe there are different solutions. Maybe it needs a complete different approach. Therefore, I would like to ask Michael Tremel from Tetragon what their idea is about how Braille output could look like in the future. Michael, tell us more. Imagine you are one of the 43 million blind people living on this planet today. And be aware, you only have a 10% chance to live in a high-income country where good education and jobs are made possible for you by modern assistive technology. Now let's imagine you were a blind school child living in an African village. Without literacy, your future is bleak. You were told that 200 years ago Louis Braille invented a tactile alphabet so that blind children will no longer be an alphabet. And living in the 21st century, the future is even brighter. For now, there are high-tech Braille displays bringing the world beneath your fingertips. So you ask, why can't I have one of these wonderful tools? And they will tell you. First, it's far too expensive. And second, it's far too delicate. It will not work in your climate and should not be put into your clumsy hands. We from Tetragon Austria believe that in just a few years we can give a more satisfying answer. When our device, presently under development, will be ready for release. Our mission is to move Braille from accessibility to wider usability and finally to affordability for everyone. Over the last five years we have worked hard to find a smart technological solution for exactly that and we call it the Braille Ring. It is a handheld device best to be compared to a computer mouse. When you insert your finger into the ring and slide the device across any surface, you will get the same reading experience as with lines in a book. The technology we use is much more robust, needing only a fraction of moving parts and active elements compared to any of today's solutions. Instead of hundreds of individually moved pins in conventional Braille displays, we use sturdy rotating elements to form the braille characters. And instead of a long and bulky line, we have the characters curled inside of a palm-sized device. If you are interested in further technical details, feel free to contact us. We expect the technological parts to be ready for the first test runs in early 2022. Now we have to find a way to ensure the widest possible affordability for the braille ring. So what will happen if we approach the market in the usual way, as all others have done before? Let's assume. Beginning 2026, we manufacture 3,000 units per year, with production assembly methods adequate for batches of this size, leading to high production costs and a retail price well above 1,000 euros. However, with this approach we will only reach high-income countries, 
without selling a single unit to the rest of the world. And this is definitely not satisfying for the social enterprise we want to be. We believe there could be a better plan. Now let's assume the following. If we can drastically increase the production batches, we will bring the material costs down to at least one third. And if we can also cut the assembly costs, the overall expenses could be reduced by another, say, 50 to 70 percent. Further, we plan to divide our market into two areas, the high-income countries and the low-income countries. We increase component production to about 100,000, while again just selling 3,000 units to high-income countries. 97% of the produced parts go to partners in low-income countries just for the costs of material and shipping in order to be assembled and distributed locally, completely for their own business. This creates a fair win-win situation. The high-income countries will benefit from a price reduction to 50%. Low-income countries can get the components and the software license for only 60 euros, a reduction by 95%, while at the same time creating jobs and gaining expertise for maintenance. With this scenario, every single year, 100,000 blind people in low-income countries could access state-of-the-art braille technology. So what is necessary to get this flying? First of all, we're looking for partners ready to share our vision, willing to support our team with both knowledge and experience, helping us build a network in low-income countries. Secondly, we need sponsors or social investors willing to supply about 400,000 euros to get the production running. If things will go as planned, the investment can be returned less than four years later, and the first full batch of 100,000 braille rings will go to low-income countries in 2027. And now imagine, you were said blind school child in 2027, asking for a braille device, enabling you to compete with your sighted peers. And the answer would be, yes, here it is, for less than $100. As you could see, there are really great innovations out there. They are just waiting to connect with you and also to collaborate with you. And maybe together you can get to new markets. But what are the markets around the globe? Therefore, let's try to get some insights, especially into emerging markets. And who could do an insight in this area better than David Baines. David, what is your experience with emerging markets? There's great demand for assistive technology in emerging new markets, but actually bringing and launching those products in those markets is a little bit more complex than many people think. One of the great myths that we face is that if we build it, they will come. But the truth is that simply building your product means that it's likely that nothing will happen. Much more action is required. Because building a product or service is only the first step in reaching your market or audience. For your product to take root, the setting has to be receptive. A fertile environment, if you like. In working with a number of startups and developers and vendors of assistive technology, being able to identify eight key factors that is suggested that you review in planning to launch in those markets. What you should be looking to ask yourself is who is working in this area and what are they doing? Should we think of them as a partner? or as a competitor, and on that basis, what action should I take? The eight areas within that ecosystem to consider range from policy to awareness, to the process of matching needs to technologies and solutions, the availability of training, the model of provision, provision of, of post-sales support and customer support, the availability of accessible content and information, and the culture of research and development. Awareness is one of the most critical factors. How will you ensure that 
people with disabilities and others are aware of your product. The idea of awareness may be both within the general population, within the community of professionals involved in recommendations, and of course, people with disabilities themselves. Building upon that, there's a process in many places where advice and assessment matching people's needs to the technology that is available is undertaken. Understanding how that is done and how you can ensure that your product is considered in that process will be very helpful to you. Similarly, many products require some level of training. Different training models are available and increasingly we see online training as an option. But understanding if that works within your market is important. And if not, will you provide the training yourself? Will you seek a partner? This is something that NGOs can be involved in. Alongside that is actually how will people get to your products? How will they pay for it? How will they download it? And how will they use it? Increasingly, as we uh, use apps on mobile phones and tablets, there's a single source for many assistive technologies. Making sure that that's available within the market that you are intending will be really important to you. Similarly, post-sales support, technical support for users will also need to be available. Whilst support may be provided internationally, most people prefer technical support to be available locally in local languages and available from local vendors who they trust. If your product needs information, guidance, then it will probably need availability of accessible content. If your product is designed to access content, you need to know that actually there will be content that can be downloaded and used on it. And in particular, availability in first language. And finally, all products need development for the future. Is there a culture of research and development that you can tap into? universities that you can link with and user groups who may be able to give you feedback. That background may be really important for the next iteration of your product. And of course, all of this needs to be coordinated. Who is it that's undertaking the development of policy and guidance and coordinating the assistive technology ecosystem within the community you want to serve? You can then look at each of these areas and ask yourself, who is working in this area? What are they doing? How are they doing it? When do they do it? Why do they do it? What's their motivation? And where? Online, offline, locally, nationally. The best models of implementation look at each of these separately. And what we found is that if we can identify areas of strength, you know, in our diagram here, those are marked as green and areas of weakness marked in red. We can begin to prioritize which areas need most intervention by us as a company. By intervening in those areas, we build the ecosystem. We have capacity building taking place. And together, the more of these areas that are yellow and green, the more likely it is that our products will be successful. Thanks, David. These are really very valuable insights, and I'm sure they are really built up on lots of experience. I can only recommend all innovators in here, but also out there listening to our session, that you follow up those recommendations and really be sure that you get those areas covered. Thanks, David. That was really a very good input. Another market out there is, is the Asian market. I think in particular our innovators don't have too much experience yet in this market. But therefore, we have an expert on board who is willing to tell us a little bit more about this special market. Therefore, I would like to welcome Alvin Tan from SG Enable to uh, let us know a little bit more about his experience out of a Singapore perspective. Welcome, Alvin. 
A very good afternoon to all. My name is Elvin from Singapore, and it's great to be here again amongst the Zero Project community. Just a quick description about myself. I am a Chinese male with short black hair, wearing spectacles, and a dark grey collared shirt. My backdrop reads, Tech Able, enabling through assistive technology. And there's a QR code to the left of the screen with the words Tech Able in the middle of it. A brief background about myself. I represent SG Enable. SG Enable is the focal agency for the disability sector in Singapore, dedicated to enabling persons with disabilities and building an inclusive society. It seeks to empower persons with disabilities and their caregivers with timely access to information, referral services and grants, enhance training and employment for them, and engage the community to integrate them as integral members of the society. And in particular, I am the part of the team that manages Tech Able, an assistive technology center where persons with disabilities can receive assistive technology assessment, training, and consultancy. Now on the screen right now is a photo of Tech Able with a web keen user on the left trying out some real devices alongside a staff, and a wheelchair user is tapping on the touch screen based on a height adjustable table on the right. Tech Able seeks to increase the awareness and the adoption of assistive technology to enable greater independence in daily living, learning, and work for persons with disabilities. The center also connects technology companies with users to encourage innovation and development of customized solutions for persons with disabilities. In Singapore, caregivers, therapists, and educators will work hand in hand to support persons with disabilities through the use of assistive technologies. And across the various government agencies, there are also financial schemes in place to support the end users as well. SG Enable also collaborates with healthcare agencies in areas where we can better serve persons with disabilities from both the social and the healthcare aspects. However, there are still gaps. The COVID-19 pandemic has made it very clear that assistive technology and infocom technologies need to go hand in hand to enable persons with disabilities and to ensure that they do not get left behind. You will be familiar with the video conferencing seen on the screen right now where the disability community and the technology providers scramble in the early days of the pandemic to learn how to integrate features such as the spotlighting on the sign interpreter and the real-time captions to make the video frequency accessible to all. So it is quite apt that this community is calling for innovative assistive technology for ICT access because it's just as important to have a robust infocom technology infrastructure in order for assistive technology to lower the barriers for persons with disabilities. At SG Enable, we acknowledge that with the mainstream technology introducing more accessibility features, the boundaries between assistive technology and mainstream technologies are blurring but in a good way, as it greatly increases the access to assistive technology, and hopefully the development in this area will bring more benefit to the end users. And underlying this technology integration is the importance of accessibility we know that the best assistive technology will not have any impact if their, the content was not accessible in the first place. We have seen a great work in digital inclusion in various countries and through organizations such as the IAAP. And right here in Singapore, we are also pushing through with our own efforts, firstly by working with government agencies to improve the accessibility of their websites. There is an increased interest in accessibility driven by the COVID-19 pandemic and we certainly hope that we can make the digital world to be as accessible as possible for everyone, including persons with disabilities. As the saying goes, it takes a village to raise a child. And I think you would agree with me that the global community should pull our resources and knowledge together to further enable persons with disabilities around the world. As such, I am very keen to learn from all of you in this session and give back what I can to the community. SG Enable has engagements with other assistive technology practitioners in the region and we certainly hope to work with more partners from all over the world to learn best practices and better support the local disability community. Having the honor of receiving a Zero Project Award has opened our eyes to the great work done by the community. And I certainly hope that I can extend the reach of the community to this part of the world as well. So on that note, I welcome you to come to Singapore to test your innovations. And I'm more than happy to share what I know with you. And with that, thank you for your attention and I look forward to working with you. What great insights into really new, innovative assistive technologies for ICT access. What great insights into the market. 
if you have also a cool assistive technology for ICT access that you are developing and you want to join our community, feel free to contact us. We really would be very happy to enlarge our group and to work together to make the world better and grant access to people with disabilities.